Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel Pumpkin Becky. Today we're looking at the succulent Echeveria and I'm going to be showing you the journey I've taken with a particular one called Pearl von Nurnberg. The footage spans from early October last year through to now which is January and you will see just how far we have come. I found this fairly forlorn looking Echeveria at our local B&Q in the bargain area. You can see it was reduced from £5 to £2 in this really nice glass vase. Um, it's gone very leggy, it's looking very dry and sad and I thought well, you know for £2 I could probably use it for propagation. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off some of these really really old dead leaves down at the bottom here so these leaves are just far too far gone to be able to do anything with so I think what I can see here this little white fluffy beastie I think looks to me very much like mealybug so I'm going to need to deal with that before I let this plant in the house near my other plants because I don't want that spreading. The best thing to use is isopropanol or um, a rubbing alcohol, something like that, a surgical spirit on a cotton bud, wipe it off. Okay, so I've just poured some surgical spirit into the cap. dipped the cotton bud in and then remove and there there's my little beastie mealy bug blah I'm gonna squish it just to make sure it's dead And then I want to go ahead and just make sure there aren't any others. Possibly even just wipe around all the leaves. When a plant becomes this stressed, it's it's going to succumb to pests and diseases. The next thing I'm going to do is... This is going to look really drastic. I'm going to behead my plant. So I want the nice tight rosette up at the top, so sort of that much. And then I want probably a centimetre or so of stalk, which has one, two, three, four leaves. Ah, and I've cut it off. <gasps> Doesn't that look scary? Then I'm going to pluck off these leaves and be careful when you pluck them off, just pull fairly gently but you want to make sure you get the whole leaf off nice and cleanly from from the stalk okay and put that to one side and do that with the others right I didn't break this one very carefully at all and if you look it's only taken part of the leaf it hasn't taken the whole leaf it's left some of it against the stem. That will never root, so I'm going to throw that away. That leaves me with that really neat little crown. I might even go as far as to take these two off as well, because when you look from the back, they're slightly extended. So let's do that. Let's pop those off. There. So a nice compact little rosette there. Lovely. And I'm going to put that to one side along with the leaves. So now I've got the rest of the plant. There's a couple of things I can do here. First off I'm going to take off all the rest of the leaves. So these are all potentially, if I do it right, young plants. Now, I'm going to cut 
cut just above a leaf. Uh, I'll bet my life that somebody could actually get cuttings out of these as well. <laughs> Try and knock this out of its pot. Right, I'm going to clean up this little baby. And I'm going to give it some new cactus compost. Take some of this off. Okay, pot, and I've got some. Levington's cactus and bonsai compost, which is quite quite sandy. Okay. I'm going to sit this into the pot in a little well. Let it sit right down into that pot. Leave soil in around it. Just firm it down. Because this one's come straight out of the soil, it's absolutely fine to pot it on straight away. The other ones are going to have to wait. What we want to happen is we want these to callus over or dry off. You don't want a wet end when you're going to do the next stage for this. So we are going to leave these to sit to dry out just for a couple of days. I went back to b and a couple of nights ago and bought up all the reduced Echeveria that they had in the indoor plant area. <laughs> so I've got myself some nice glass vases now. Uh, I won't be using those for succulents. Uh, and what I did was exactly the same process, and I have ended up with a whole heap load of Echeveria leaves which have all callused over beautifully. There is no moisture at all at that tip. It's a perfect pull off the plant. You can just see it's sort of a half moon shape. So I've managed to get the whole leaf there, which is perfect because that's the growing tip. I have filled my tray, my seed tray, only a shallow layer of my Levington's cactus and bonsai compost. All you're going to do is lay the leaves out in contact with the soil. There doesn't seem to be a right way to do it, but I'm going to put them um, top side facing upwards. I'm going to leave a little gap between each plant, and just in case one rots off, I, I don't want it to transmit that to any of the other leaves. Look at all these plants I've got for six, eight pounds. I've got the potential of an awful lot of new plants. So the next job I'm going to do is to plant up the little beheaded rosettes where each of the leaves were pulled off we should get roots coming from so I've just filled little tiny pots with some of the cactus and bonsai mix make a well just deep enough for the stem pop it in and lightly firm in So the stem is, is 
nicely in the soil, there's no soil sitting on the rosette. Please remember that my techniques, my success rates, everything is based on me, where I am in the world, the temperature, the amount of light I can provide, um, the types of soil I'm using, there's so many variables. So nothing that I'm doing here is set in absolute stone. You have to find your own way with succulents, but there are horticultural ways of doing things that will give you the best possible chances. I started off with Levington's cactus and bonsai compost but I found that to be incredibly sandy and what that was doing was holding too much moisture. When I tried to use it for uh, leaf cuttings it was just it was staying wet, really wet, it wasn't draining away at all so what I ended up doing was mixing that two parts of that with one part perlite just to really lighten and bulk up the, the contents and texture of the soil and that made a much more free draining soil and much more suitable for my conditions. I've now moved over to using something called cocoa peat which is not peat at all, there's no peat in this, it's cocoa fibre uh, from coconuts and it is rice husks mixed with various other things. I've also added a little bit of perlite in there as well because I like the open texture that the perlite offers. Um, although this is incredibly open, it's almost like a forest floor, it's beautiful. The main reason for moving away from the Levington's cactus and bonsai compost and over to something different like the cocoa peat apart from the fact that it was so sandy and holding too much moisture for the succulents was that it had peat in it real peat and a succulents don't like that and b i don't like that it's it's not sustainable um, there are so many alternatives out there that we can be using instead of um, draining on natural peat resources so I, had I realised the Levingtons had that in it, I wouldn't have bought it in the first place. So here is everything I have managed to grow from those four original Pearl von Nuremberg plants. So this here is one of the very original four, as is this. And then we have three and four. So as you can see they are still growing, they have baby pups on them, uh, baby pups, this one's got lots of baby pups on it. This is one of the original crown cuttings that I took, look how beautiful she is. These are the other five original crown cuttings that I took. Look how amazing that is. I'm going to have to do something about that. I have now been able to take three more crown cuttings and this cute little crown cutting which is, as you can see, in a champagne cork. On top of that is this whole tray full of baby plants. And you can see I have a range of sizes. So now I just want to do a little demonstration for one of my subscribers called Alex who's having a bit of trouble with etiolation. Um, here we are with the pot of five crown cuttings that have, so they've been growing in here for two months I suppose, probably. Uh, growing really well, it's winter here, uh, 
They should be summer growing, but they're doing so well inside with the grow lights. But I thought I'd quite like to take this center one down a bit. Uh, they could probably do with being in a slightly wider pot, but for the moment, I'm just going to take off the crown from this one. So what I'm going to do is come in between the leaves about a centimetre below the crown and I'm just going to cut straight through the stem and remove that whole crown. There we go. And it's also going to give me some extra leaves. And the reason it's going to give me extra leaves is because I need a bit of stem and the leaf nodes to grow roots from. So I'm going to pluck off one, two, oh, that one's broken, three, that gives me a lovely rosette that gives me some growing points for roots to come from. That's a really nice cutting. So I'm going to leave that to callus over for three, four, five days, depends, it should dry out fairly quickly. I want that entire surface to be completely dry before I pop it onto soil. So I think the message with all succulents is don't be afraid, just keep trying, keep trying. If you break a leaf, save it. Let it dry out, put it to one side, put it on some soil once it's completely calloused over and it should give you more babies. Um, I came into this with no expectations. I spent two pounds on my first plant. I really hoped I was going to be successful. And look where I am today. I've got so many plants. I even gave one away the other day. And this is just my Pearl von Nuremberg. I've got all my others up in my plant room as well. Right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Alex, I hope that helped a little bit. I hope that explained what to do. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.